Welcome to our interview series, We Choose to Thrive, brought to you by Becky Norwood of The Woman I Love. We bring you stories of survivors who have chosen to heal, to thrive. If you are an abuse survivor and are starting or continuing your healing journey, these stories will provide hope, inspiration, and a knowingness that you are not alone. Join us in today's interview. Thank you so much for being with us today in our We Choose to Thrive series. Um, would you please introduce yourself, Nikki, tell a little bit about your background and where, what got you to the where we are to the, where you are today? Well, sure. Thank you for having me. First of all, um, it's wonderful to see you. Mm -hmm. Becky, my name is Nikki DeBose, and I'm a former model turned author, speaker, and mental health advocate. Um, my debut memoir is called Washed Away from Darkness to Light, and it's going to be out very soon, which I can't wait. <laughs> I'm working on it for a very long time, so I'm, I'm extremely excited about it. And it's basically just covers life through my eyes from the ages of 2 through 27. Um, I'm 31 now. And I've been in recovery from a variety, pretty much everything you can think of, of uh, mental health issues, um, which all kind of started when I um, was a witness to domestic violence in my house um, and also was physically, sexually, verbally, and emotionally abused. Um, so that kind of spawned a very long 17-year uh, battle with eating disorders and other co-occurring disorders such as um, depression, psychosis, um, which I was officially diagnosed with last year. So for all those years I was dealing with that and I didn't know what that was. And, you know, other, other issues such as sexual addictions. I was a workaholic. <laughs> Which I think is really important, you know, to come forward and say that because a lot of uh, in America we are it's very easy to be a workaholic. Um, I think that's okay. So, Mickey, where are you now on your healing journey? Well, thank God, so I, get, I do give him all the credit. I have been sober from alcohol and drugs for the past five years and free from my eating disorder, been in strong recovery from that for the past three and a half years. Of course, I do, because I've dealt with so many different issues, I, I wouldn't say I struggle, but I am faced with challenges all across the board. And where are you now on your healing journey? Thank God I give him all the credit. Um, really, I do. I am a firm believer in the 12th step, and that has really helped me. Um, so I've been free from alcohol and drugs sober for the past five years. I have been going strong and free, free from my eating disorder for the past three and a half years. Congratulations. Um, thank you. It's huge. It's, it's huge, but it is <laughs> one day at a time and sometimes one moment at a time because even though – this is really important that I say this because even though that is the case, there are moments, and this is why this is this, you know, these are mental illnesses because there are moments, especially I will say with the drugs and the alcohol, where for me it is like a, um, it's, it's very environmental, you know, where it's just, I'll hear like certain type of music that will play or something and it will trigger me. Um, maybe that's not so good for me. Or I definitely have had to change my lifestyle completely. You know, I can't hang out with certain types of people that are maybe like my old self um, because it's like that, you know. And, and I can be, I'm not a perfect person. I just have to, I have to make the choice every day to, to be, a better person. There are triggers, aren't there? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And I, I would say that I um, do struggle with with certain things more than others, and that is definitely the sexual addiction. It's, and it's just a result of trauma from childhood. You know, when we don't have, when we're not born in, into a naturally healthy environment, it changes us. And so it's harder as adults to, you know, to, to stay that way. And that's okay. There's no shame in that. To have old boundaries and to understand. In the process of doing what I'm doing now, I have found for myself even that 
I couldn't understand some of the things that I did throughout the years as just trying to heal and get and better. And it's very fascinating to me how these are things that we do because of that healing process and because we're defining, we're learning to define who we really are. So what would you think the most healing thing that you have done to heal from the trauma of the past? A healthy identity because I didn't know who I was at all, you know, um, because my identity was... I would say stolen from me, not having that healthy childhood. So I looked for all different ways, you know, to kind of shape my identity. For me personally, it was gaining a spiritual identity, and that has greatly helped me. Um, if it weren't for that, I don't know where I would be right now. And again, I'm not saying that I'm like, you know, some holier than thou person because I'm. I'm completely the opposite in that. You're very uh, human. I'm very, very, very human, and I struggle. I want to make it very clear that I struggle every single day, and I make a million mistakes, you know. But I don't, I, I definitely don't look down on myself when I make a mistake. I understand that um, I have a Heavenly Father who loves and accepts me. And I think that's what helps me a lot from sliding back into the eating disorder and the drugs and alcohol. And it, it, it helps me, you know, say it's okay and I continue moving forward. Um, but I know that I'm God's child. It gives me a lot of real confidence, whereas before my confidence was rooted in all of the wrong things, you know, all the superficial things all this false glamour and, and, and things like that. And it, also in my work, you know, in my career. And that that never ends up well because that, you know, can be taken from us very, very quickly. Right. So you had quite an experience within the realm of modeling that um, really was a shaper in your life too, wasn't it? Yeah, because, you know, I got in, I started working in television first. Well, I started working in modeling when I was 16 and then um, was kind of bullied and fat shamed. So then I got out of that. And then later again, I, you know, tried to push my way into the entertainment business and started working in television and then had a real professional career in modeling for a long time. And it greatly shaped me because I didn't have any self-esteem, you know, and all these other mental health issues that I had. So I, you know, allowed my work and what other people, the way that they perceived me as to become my identity. Mm -hmm. And that was a disaster because when you combine that with mental health issues um, and addictions and things like that, it's, and that's why we see so many times in the entertainment business, we hear so-and-so committed suicide or so-and-so, you know died of an overdose or things like that, I was headed that way, you know, because I had no guidance and no love for myself. So, yeah, the recovery and leaving that business and going through recovery was the greatest gift ever. And well, I know that there's that's part of what your book is about is exposing that industry for, for what it really is, too. Not to put anyone down or to say, because, again, I – because I am working right now to help to change, you know, because I think it can be, it needs to be a regulated industry. You know, we, we want to um, change laws, create laws. Um, it's not to put anyone down or to expose anyone in that sort of way. It's just that it can benefit from changes because there are a lot of minors working in that business, you know, and in no industry is it okay for someone to be abused, exploited, Rapes. Um, that's right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I understand that. So, what words of wisdom would you care to share to share with our listeners to, today? That that would, if somebody was starting right on this healing path and deciding for them, making the choice that it's time to take action to start healing and eventually to be thriving in their lives. What words of wisdom would you give? The number one most important thing I would say is that you you are worth all the love in the world, and if you are feeling like you need to reach out for help, that's great because you're self-aware. That's very important. Um, a lot of people aren't self-aware, so give yourself a big pat on the back. Mm -hmm. um, you know, don't be harsh on yourself. Try not to be. 
um, and just reach out because there's always someone who is willing to help you, who's ready to help you, who wants to help you. Um, you know, isolation is one of the biggest friends of mental illness, but it's an illusion. It's not, um, you know, it's not real. So reach out, fight all the voices that tell you not to reach out and then reach out because the moment that you do, you're, you are um, going to be received mm -hmm. with love and kindness and support. <clears throat> Knowing that they're not alone. Yeah, exactly. Very, very important. Are there specific resources? Is there a book you've read, um, some type of organization that you've acquainted with that you, that you could recommend to our listeners? There's so many. Um, well, if you go to my website, NikkiDeBose.com, and you click on resources, I have an entire list of resources from everything from eating disorders to trauma to suicide prevention. Um, first of all, if you're just feeling witness to domestic violence, please call 911. Um, I think that's very important. You know, if you are a survivor of child sexual abuse, you can visit Peaceful Hearts Foundation. That's the organization I work with. If you are struggling with an eating disorder, I recommend you call the National Eating Disorders Association hotline. They also have a confidential click to chat. And of course, if you are contemplating suicide, please um, visit the National Suicide Prevention um, hotline immediately. And I have all of those numbers, again, on my website. Very um, good. Yeah. Well, you, I, I've looked at your website. You do have a lot of resources there, and we so appreciate it. So thank you for taking this time, Nikki. I know you're busy, and it's hard to take these kind of, this kind of time, but it's a voice that we all need to hear. Your voice is what we all need to hear. And I applaud you for being willing to, to take these steps for choosing to be well, to, to, for choosing to heal, and being a part of it. We choose to thrive. This story was brought to you by The Woman I Love at www.thewomanilove.com. If you are starting down the path to healing, no matter what stage, our united message is that you are not alone. We do not want to live with a victim mentality. We choose to thrive, and as such, we are joining hands to spread the message that you too can heal and thrive. Will you join us as a force of change we need in our world? Only by healing, growing strong and uniting, can we create the awareness of this terrible epidemic that is plaguing our world. We heal in many different ways. There is no one right way to heal, but the right thing to do is to heal. Heal for yourself for your families, and for our world. Will you join us in this We Choose to Thrive revolution? Reach out to us at www.thewomanilove.com. Also check out the incredible resources at www.rainn.org. And if you are actively facing abuse in this moment, do not delay. Seek out help in your local community immediately. Here is to your wellness, healing, and thriving.